This is a metallurgical microscope and it's been equipped with a uh, manual XY table. And the purpose of this table is to allow the specimen to be moved around. Now I use my metallurgical microscope to take uh, photographs of uh, semiconductors. And uh, they're so large what I often have to do is do uh, what's known as mosaics where I take a uh, grid-like pattern of images and then combine them on the computer uh, to get sufficient resolution to what I'm trying to photograph. Uh, and sometimes uh, it's upwards of 100 photographs I need to take and of course manually adjusting the table uh, is a bit tiresome. And uh, this video is basically about the construction of a uh, automated table that uh, has a couple stepper motors that moves uh, a gantry around in which I can put a slide and then um, take the images automatically. As you might imagine, an automated uh, stage for a, a slide basically has an X and a Y and two stepper motors that move uh, a gantry around and on that uh, top I can basically put a standard uh, lab slide and I've uh, designed it so it uh, gets held by a, a friction fit along a, a couple of rails in this uh, piece of plastic. Uh, this was a, just a good try at doing a semi-precise uh, assembly using uh, my 3D printer, a technique I have never used for building uh, precise machinery. So mostly uh, a learnings exercise. So the uh, starting point of this project was very much an old CD-ROM. They're an absolute gold mine for uh, precision motion components and they can often be uh, extracted for free from computers people are throwing away. Uh, this is the um, x-axis of the uh, stage and uh, of course there's some linear guides, there's the stepper motor uh, and then there's of course the uh, the lead screw nut. Uh, instead of picture of this, the nice thing about the uh, lead screws from CD-ROMs that are actually spring-loaded so there's a preload on them so the backlash uh, is reduced. Uh, in terms of 3D printing obviously a pretty straightforward piece. Um, one thing I noticed in my printer prints, uh, just a slight bit undersized, which is actually kind of nice because these uh, guides actually fit uh, very stiff, which is what I want. Uh, then of course when I want the actual stage to slide, uh, I need to make a larger hole. And because the printer can't hold absolutely super precision, uh, that's where a numbered drill set really comes in handy. Uh, this thing has uh, just a tremendous selection of uh, sizes and what I can do is pick exactly what I want. And then I uh, basically reamed out the hole so I get a really good fit about the smooth motion that was desired. And so on this end here I put a, a D-shell connector so I can connect it back to an Arduino control computer. Uh, obviously a fairly thick slab here about eight millimeters and I had to do that to create enough rigidity on the assembly. Uh, and of course uh, then the D-shell connector isn't uh, so large so I had to basically uh, uh, inset it through a cutout here and then some cutouts for the hex uh, screws here. Uh, both showing, I think, a strength and the weakness uh, in 3D printing. So uh, PLA is not a particularly strong material, but uh, if you get careful with it and build beams of uh, sufficient strength, you can, of course, get uh, where you need to be on that parameter. Uh, and then, of course, because 3D printing is so easy to make cutouts, it's actually fairly easy to work around some of the uh, thickness issues that uh, show up. Uh, so with 3D printing, I was trying a whole bunch of assembly techniques out to see which one uh, works well. Uh, this is actually three different prints and uh, obviously has some electromechanical components onto it. I actually adhere the stepper motor using double-sided tape. It's gotten quite strong. It's a low load application, so I think that may have adequate service life. Um, I have one piece here, then I glue it on to another piece, and uh, that's because I need a step the way the microscope has been designed. Everything on the internet said that the LePage uh, gel control instant glue was a good choice there for PLA uh, and it certainly seemed to do a really good job. The adhesion was very quick um, and it's nice and planar. Uh, you can see some screws here. I even tried traditional uh, tapping of holes into this piece here then putting a M.2 screw in uh, and, and that worked really well. So one of the really critical things about an uh, automated stage is that it has to hold the slide exactly flat. The uh, depth of focus on a uh, microscope is incredibly small. What I've got going on here is I've got a dial indicator attached to a fairly flat surface. That's the uh, cast iron metal top of my table saw. Of course the microscope base. And what I can do is move the uh, assembly around to gauge how much deviation I get um, on the assembly. And it's holding to about 0 0.02 millimeters which actually really pleases me. Um, that's better than I thought I'd get actually out of uh, using sort of a, a fairly flexible material which of course is plastic. So uh, really encouraging actually. This is really an uh, interesting approach to building um, accurate assemblies using uh, 3D printed parts. 
Uh, so I'm reasonably pleased actually. This 3D printer seems to have a lot of promise in terms of creating these uh, jigs here. Uh, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you probably can recognize there's been about a five week gap between videos and uh, uh, that's because uh, in order to do this 3D printed uh, part, I had to uh, learn a uh, modeling language called OpenSCAD. It's a parametric modeler for 3D parts and uh, I'm going to say that's quite a rabbit hole, but once you learn it, uh, the possibilities seem to be quite excellent in creating some fairly interesting parts that would be relatively challenging to do unless you get into some fairly uh, advanced metalworking. And uh, I think you know, with enough care here, understanding the material properties, uh, you can get the stiffness that you need if you can uh, just uh, build the proper depths of beams and uh, join the parts appropriately.